It's time once again to slip into your camo, grab your bow, and join us out in the field for another episode of the Up North Journal, presented by PSE Archery. The Up North Journal crew is knocked and ready to rock for another exciting adventure. So let's step outside and hit the trail. This episode of the Up North Journal podcast is brought to you by PSE Archery. Carbon Express. Fourth Arrow Camera Arms. Wind Scent Hunting Sense. Killer Food Plots. Seeds, Supplements, and Attractants. Cabela's. Spot Shooters. Limb Walker Game Call. Twisted Minds Bowstrings. Hunter's Blend Coffee. Antler Action. And Family Traditions Tree Stands. And don't forget you can catch us in syndication at 2 p.m. Eastern Time on GoodTalkRadio.com. Welcome back to another episode of the Edmund Journal, everybody. I'm host Mike Adams, sitting in the cabin tonight all by myself. There's no Danny around. He is staying home this weekend, enjoying the Memorial Day weekend, as everybody should with their friends and family. So we've given him the weekend off. Um, but we're still going to have a show. We're going to sit here and chat a little bit. Uh, a little bit later in the show, we're going to bring you uh, our actual interview that I did back in April with Dan Yasa of PSE Archery and Chris Schnur of Cabela's, talking about setting up and getting into the target archery game. So stay tuned for that in the next segment. But uh, what we're going to bring you tonight is... Actually, I uh, I did get my target bow set up this week. So, um, first thing we did, as we talked last week here, let me flip cameras real quick. We started with uh, the stands release, okay? The stands release, I've been practicing with that today. I shot, oh, 50 or 60 arrows with it, and it's taken some getting used to. I can tell you that right now. It uh, It's not quite like... The standard triggered release that I've been using in the past, you know, the wrist strap where you'd actually execute the shot and using your finger as a trigger, trigger finger, so to say, and executing the shot. You know, now we're using our thumb on this and hitting this barrel or rocking that, that release into the barrel or into your thumb to execute the shot. So it's taking some getting used to. Um, let me flip back the other camera here real quick. As I went through this, um, I noticed my shots seem to group a lot better. Um, but what I did notice too is getting used to switching from this style release, the, the trigger release to, to the stands release. When I would get back at full draw and pull back, um, a lot of times I would flinch. I was almost wanting to take that finger and reach forward and pull, but obviously there's nothing there. And a couple times my shots got a little bit hanky with that. I, it's, it's muscle memory that's been ingrained in this arm and this hand and finger for probably, well, ever since I was, you know, 14 years old when I started shooting a bow. So I'm trying to break nearly 40 years of memory in, uh, in, in train, retraining my muscles and my mind to actually take and rotate this into my thumb to execute the shot. So with that being said, it, it took a, a lot of mind over matter today but i still pleased with the way the bow shot and uh, speaking of the bow i got it sitting right here as well okay you guys remember i was over at spot shooters this week setting up the phenom sd from psc uh, let me flip over to this other camera again here real quick get a little better view of what we got going on but uh it's got the the mini drive cam on it which pulls real nice it gives you a good solid back wall um, the valley on this obviously is different than what I'm used to with the PSE Evolve. The, the valley seems to be uh, narrower, but uh, a good solid back wall. And I'm running the Copper John Mark III Pro Sight on the front here. And setting this up, um, we did a little tuning with it. Talking with uh, Jim Beasley over at Spot Shooter this week after we got everything set up. He wanted me to do a walk back tune, 10 yards to 30 yards. So got my first pin set up close to the bullseye, shot, got a good grouping. To, took and hung a string from that arrow. One of the arrows, we just left one of the arrows in the bale. String down, put a weight at the bottom. So it, we got a nice straight string. Step back to 30 yards, and then we shoot at that string to see which side of the arrows were falling. And then tune the rest to that to those shots to get that shot the shots to fall right there on the string. So that took a little bit of doing. And actually, I didn't have a long enough string and actually hit the weight that I had on the end of the string with... Uh, one of my arrows and, and it cost me an arrow so shattered an arrow so that was a lesson learned but we got everything tuned on that from from left to right everything's flying good and i started working on my top pin there and talking with jim you know i'm asking myself okay we're going to shoot uh hunter division i got five pins that's what hunter division allows uh, is five pins 
five fixed pins. So I'm like, okay, so where do we set up with this? We set up 20, 30, 40, 50, or do we set up something different? And he told me, well, he said, most guys that shoot this, they'll set up 25, 35, 45, 55, and 65, and then play off of those pins. So taking his recommendation, that's where I'm working on my first pin, my top pin. Uh, you can see there, I have, well, you probably can't see it, but we're, uh, we're working on that pin set up at 25 yards. And and that's kind of where I'm at right now. One thing that happened to me today that scared the living daylights out of me. Um, the, I'm not used to shooting with a big stabilizer out front. I use a mini stabilizer on my hunting setup, but I've never shot with, with this rear stabilizer. So that's something that's new. And the way this is, is set up here, you can see on the camera, this bar ties right into the front the front stabilizer right there below my hand. You know, it's got this little bracket that comes off to the side and feeds this back stabilizer. Well, during the shooting today, oh, probably 30, 40 shots in, this started to work loose and this rod rotated down and I wasn't paying attention. And I, I took a shot and it, and it caught the edge of the stabilizer, this rubber back here. And when it did, I actually thought the bow came apart. It, it really freaked me out. Um, it checked everything out. You know, limbs are all solid, no cracks, no nothing. There's no frayed spots on it. Uh, the cams are all in good shape. Everything's fine. And I spent a lot of time going through it. And then I, I got back up to the bale, started shooting at 10 yards again, just to make sure everything was still spot on. But eventually we worked back out to that 30 yard mark, got everything tuned, and then started tuning that 25 yard pin. But uh, this is something I'm really going to have to start paying attention to, uh, just simply because I'm not used to shooting with that and making sure that this is tight. So, so you guys are getting into this game, learn from Mike, learn from the mistake that I made that, uh, that this thing, it can actually rotate down and into the shot or into the string path. So it, uh, it woke me up pretty quick. So, but other than that, you know, the bow performs really good. Um, I'm really pleased the way it shoots. It feels good in the hand. Uh, like I said, with the stands release and everything, practicing through that towards the end of my shooting today, everything was coming together pretty good. And, uh, the, the grouping was, was a lot better. So, but, uh, so that is the PSC Phenom SD that I'm going to be rocking this year when we start getting out and shooting targets. So, and actually I forgot too, the AAE, uh, prophecy rest as well as, is what we're using on this drop away. So, alrighty. So let's get that back over there and let me get back on my front camera here. So, but yesterday, being that I had the day off work, we did a little talking with uh, our land consultants up north, and they wanted to come over. We've been talking a little bit about this over the last couple of weeks, that we're, we're going to be working, doing some deer management on our property, and uh, we, we've got some guys coming on board to help us out and, uh, and get us on the right path. So this weekend was a weekend they wanted to come up, take a look at what we had, and actually go over the food plots, kind of figure the lay of the land out, and start putting a plan together, start working towards that plan. So uh, that's what we did yesterday. But uh, I've got a short video here that we shot yesterday, and with permission from the consultant, he said I can show this. So here on the live stream, we're going to show this. Those of you on the podcast, actually, you're not going to be able to, to see it. Um, we're, we'll post it. You'll have to go over and watch the live stream for those of you on the podcast. But uh, I'm going to put this up. If, it's a little, if the audio is a little off, let me know. Text me here real quick. But uh, we're going we're gonna to try to play this here. First time we've ever done this with, with actual video with, with audio. So we'll see how this goes. That is, uh, that's the video. Hopefully you guys could hear that. Hopefully it came through okay. Uh, but for those of you who don't know, that's Wayne Sitton, uh, who I've had the opportunity of talking with quite a few times. We've done some video work with him before. And uh, the, the amount of information that, uh, that we get, f that he shares with us is just invaluable. So uh, the thing I got that I guess I really took away from, from that little demonstration right there. And we've talked about this before, you know, food plots versus, you know, how much forage is in the woods. And we did our deer browse study here oh, a couple weeks back. And we still haven't got the full results back from it yet. But, uh, you know, we knew going into this that, that our woods was heavily browsed. But as he showed there in that circle, when he threw that hula hoop out there, just arbitrarily threw it out there in the middle of, of the field or of the woods, there was very few plants there that deer can actually will eat or can eat that, that give him, uh, the nutrition. So you saw how few he picked out of there. And then you take that and throw that out in the middle of a food plot and, you know, a well-managed forest land versus a food plot, is, he said is a hundred to one. So, you know, you, you do the math. It's just, you can figure out 
food plots this time of year are really important. Uh, but the other thing that really opened my eyes was talking about the predation. You know, with the, with the does coming in now into fawning season and needing that that nutrition to make milk, if they're out in the woods, even if it's well managed woods and landscape, that it's it's not going to be uh, as robust as what a food plot is. So they're out spending more time in the woods versus the food plot searching for food to make milk. They're away from their fawns for a longer period of time. With that being said, that gives the predators more time to find those fawns, okay? So the longer the mother's away from the fawns, the worse it gets, you know? And when I asked that question to him, you know, he said, yes, predation goes up tremendously. So, um, you know, that was really eye-opening to to me to to understand that even food plot, planting food plots kind of helps with how much predation goes on, which I never equated the two. I never, I never put food plots and predation together to understand how that dynamic worked, but it made complete sense when, when he was talking about it with them going out into the field versus being in the food plots and getting that food. So uh, that was yesterday. We spent a couple hours up there on the property before the big rains came. And, uh, you know, after that, then we headed back home. So, but um, you know, that's going to be it pretty much today for, for here, the first segment of the show. Uh, like I said, for those on the podcast, we're going to get into the archery segment that we pre-recorded back in April. And uh, right now, we're just going to take it and throw it to a break. And we'll be right back after this. PSE Archery has reinvented the way you buy bows. From now on, you can make the most educated decision possible by basing your bow choice specifically on your shooting needs and goals. All you need to do is ask yourself, what kind of shooter am I? What do I want to achieve? PSE will help find the right category for you. So, what kind of shooter are you? Find out at PSEArchery.com. Killer Food Plots have been helping property owners for over 20 years create premier whitetail habitat. Whether replenishing your soil with their all-natural organics fusion pellets or planting a premier KFP food plot seed blend to help your deer rebuild their bodies through spring and summer while supplying the much needed high energy during and after the rut, you can trust that Killer Food Plots family and their products will help your deer achieve their full potential. It's a nice cold day in April. What's going on, Dan? We're supposed to be out shooting targets. We're supposed to be shooting foam. We're supposed to be getting our bows ready. It is spring, right? Uh, well, I actually thought it was deer season. I had three deer in my backyard the other day. Oh, well, I mean, it's <laughs> looking outside. It is uh, not nice and looks like Santa Claus should be coming here for too long. Right on, man. I, You know, you give me a call today. He said, hey, can you meet me at Cabela's? Well, heck yeah, why not, man? <laughs> so I made the drive down tonight, you know, and uh, appreciate you taking a little time out to talk a little bit of bow in archery with us yeah absolutely anytime so you know danny and i've been talking and it's where is, where's danny is he on vacation oh uh, he he i don't know i think he's still playing with the easter bunny you oh, know he okay. i give him spring break he's hiding okay. so well, you exchange one dan for another i guess <laughs> yeah there we go i think i got the better end of the deal on this one <laughs> <laughs> but uh you know we, we were talking oh i don't know a couple weeks back and i said you know we, we got some uh our bows are, are getting ready to come in and that we've ordered and we need to start thinking about getting ready for spring. And you actually took us to Toledo last year, Toledo, Ohio for a, mm-hmm. a target shoot. First time Danny and I had ever experienced it. And you've kind of started getting us turned in that direction, but you know, you've been telling us this is going to be able to enhance what we do in the field as far as hunting. And it's going to make us better hunters as, or better shooters in the field. Yeah. I mean, absolutely. It, and it's, it's, you can go in the backyard and practice all you want, but getting into the competition side, I mean, I step on the line at Vegas, I'm shooting for $100,000 or close to it, and you can't miss. So it's you get the same kind of adrenaline feel you do when a big deer walks out or, or even a doe walks out for that matter. You kind of get your heart <laughs> thumping, and it's like you've got the one shot right. to make this happen. And it's it's you get into a tournament, and when in, it's shots for score – Every arrow was this one arrow means everything. Right. So it's you get your you get your body used to shooting under pressure and you get yourself used to trusting the process you build and building your shot to know that even when you're nervous, as long as you do what you know how to do, your arrow is gonna find where it's supposed to go. 
you know, the last time we talked to you, I think that was after, was that Lancaster? Yep. You know, and, and you talked about that a lot, about the process and, mm-hmm. and building a process. I don't care what kind of process you build. $100,000, man, that's bigger than any <laughs> buck that I, I think I could ever shoot at. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But, uh, you know, how, how long should it take for a person that wants to start shooting, you know, for score, you know, to think about building that process and starting from, you know, like Danny and I from square one and getting to where, you know, you can you can get into some of these tournaments and have some fun and actually shoot for some decent score. Is that something that is achievable in a year? Oh, I mean, the best way to practice doing that stuff is to get out and do it. So even if you're beginning and you're just starting to shoot, go to go to some tournaments, even like some local 3D shoots or local spot shoots or whatever. The best practice you can get and the best way to practice getting yourself quote unquote worked up and, and shooting and knowing what it feels like is just get out there and do it. So you may not you're not gonna shoot with the best of the best right away, but the more and more you do it, just like when you're shooting deer, the more and more deer you shoot, the more and more you get used to doing it, the better your results are gonna be the the more and more you do it. Okay. Um now I guess when we, we need to start talking about this, we need to start with basic uh the basic tools that we're gonna be using and how that's going to correlate into what we do in the field. You know, I'm shooting the, the Evolve 31, PSE mm-hmm. Evolve 31, and I've got ordered the Phenom. Um, you know, talk about the differences and how them bows react a little bit and what the Phenom is going to do to get me to where I need to be. I mean, and I don't want anyone listening to this think they have to go out and get a target bow. You can go out and do any of these tournaments or shoots with your regular hunting bow, and it's, it's actually great practice. Um, usually after the last big field shoot I have for the year. I, I continue to shoot targets, but I switch everything over and start shooting my hunting bows. So August, September time, I'm going to be shooting all the same stuff that I was shooting with my target bows, but shooting with my hunting bows. So I don't want people to think that the only way you're going to be able to do it is to go out and buy a new bow and, and get right. a new setup. But um, the bow you've got coming is a little bit longer axle to axle. Um, the limb pockets are a little bit more straight up and down than the Evolve are, so it's going to aim a little bit different. Okay. Um, so on, you, typically on a target platform, you're going to have something with a little bit straighter limbs and not quite as parallel limb as, as our hunting bows are because for targets to be absolutely the most accurate you want, it's just going to be a little bit different build compared okay. to a hunting bow. Okay. Now, looking at that it, it, with, with a straighter limb versus the parallel laid back, um, you talk about that accuracy. So in a hunting setup, it's just it's a little more forgiving, or we don't need to worry about the pinpoint exact placement like we do in archery. Um, How does that correlate? So with a, a little bit more stood up limb, it's going to be have a little bit more vibration to it. It's going to be a little bit louder um, okay. than a hunting bow. So that's the main difference between the two. Um, like our newer Performax series and the Shoot Down series, they're pretty close to what um, the evolved geometry of the limbs are, but it's just a longer axle-to-axle platform. Okay. <clears throat> now, so, when you get into those longer axle-to-axle, that helps to study that bow up a little bit, helps to keep away from the hand torque and all those issues too? Yeah, it just makes it a little bit easier to aim. The longer axle-to-axle, um, basically if you think about, like if you had a 2 by 4 that was 4 feet long with uh, a string tied to each end of it, and you pulled that back and held it, it'd be way easier than if you had those two pieces of string tied to a pencil. Right. Okay, so, I, mean, I as, got you. As you're aiming and as you're pulling back, it's just going to be a little bit easier to aim on target. Okay. So now, okay, we'll get our bows in. Obviously, we, we, we got to put some gear on them. We got to put a rest on it. We got to, we got to do sights. You know, and even you've got to think about a different release this year, you know, and, and the arrows. I mean, there's so much that goes into it. I don't want to get anybody overwhelmed, but okay, so we decide that we're going to shoot either the bow that we got for, for our hunting setup or we're actually going to get a, a target bow. Where do we go from there? I mean, your your local pro shop's the best the best source of knowledge you're probably going to get unless you know someone uh, either like myself or, or Chris. Um, we're going to help you guys get, get that all straightened out and get you guys exactly what you need to get out and actually have a, a full target set up for this year. Um, but yeah, going, getting to your pro shop and asking them questions, telling them about your style of shooting, how long you've been shooting. Um, cause like someone like you guys who've never shot target stuff before, mm-hmm. I'm not going to put a blade rest on your bow right away Okay, because it, they're a little bit harder to draw back. They're simpler, but it, it is a little bit harder to keep that arrow on the rest um, okay. unless you're really used to sh- using that kind of rest. So we're probably going to put you into a follow away rest, like a prophecy or something like that. But, okay. um, yeah, so you got that. You've got stabilizers. You got to pick. Okay, if am I going to shoot uh, like a bow hunter class? Am I going to shoot an open class? So most bow hunter classes, you're looking at like a 12 inch front stabilizer. Okay. Um, some organizations are a little different, but most of them are 12 inch front stabilizer. Some allow a back bar. Some don't. And then uh, with your sights, 
If you want to go to a hunter setup, you can use your pin sights. Most of them allow five pins. Or if you go to an open setup, you're going to use a slider, and then you've got the option of doing magnification inside the scope and things like that. Okay, and, and, and that's kind of what you were running last year when we were at Toledo? Yep. Single pin. Because I, I noticed you kept making adjustments and clicking, and you'd look and, and with your field glasses or your binoculars, and you'd be looking and, and trying to judge and, and estimate that distance Yep. And, and make those clicks and adjustments. So that's what you're talking about with the slider. System. Yeah, the slider, it's... it's uh, um, trying to think of someone who hasn't seen it before. If you're think like an HHA slider, it's kind of like that, but it's instead of it being where the piece where you move the side up and down on the back, it's on the front, and then it's got click micro adjustments on it. So it's very, very fine, minute adjustments that you can do with those sights. Okay, so you're fine tuning right on the line. Yep. Okay, so that's that's the open class. Yep. Okay, and then you were talking about the the hunter class, um, maybe something like that for us. It gives you a little more versatility with the gear that you're using. Is that going to was that something you'd recommend for somebody like us to, to get into first versus something like what you're talking about in open? It just makes it easier because it's equipment that you're more used to using. Familiar with. So, and, and it, I mean, you can use the stuff you have on your bow now. Okay. And most people that have regular pin sights and regular hunting stabilizers said they can go right out to the tournaments and shoot that stuff. Okay. And if it's uh, like an NFA event or an ASA event, they've got classes specifically for quote unquote bow hunter setups. Okay. Right on. Um, if somebody was looking to take just their basic gear and, and go out and do like a hunter class, where do they begin to look for for shoots or where do people find this stuff at? I mean, because we've got you for a resource. I mean, you're like, hey, we got this shoot. Come on down. We're going we're gonna to go do this this weekend. But I mean, there's some national organizations. The National Field Archery Association is one, and typically every state has their own state affiliation group. So if you go to the NFA national webpage, usually they'll have a link to your state page. Uh, Michigan, uh, I believe you guys have the MAA. Um, I don't know if that's the USA Archery or the NFA, but the USA Archery is another organization that does tournaments, right. and they typically have a um, an organization in each state that kind of runs their state affiliate. Um, in Ohio, it's Ohio Target Archers um, for the USA Archery, and Ohio uh, Archer. Uh, what is it? OAA is the NFA uh, version of that in Ohio. Oh. Okay, you know, I, I remember when, when you took us down there uh, to that Ohio shoot, I was so out of my element, you know, and I, I was scared to death, thinking that, you know, okay, we're going to get waxed down here. People are going to laugh at us, going to look at us and say, you know, who are these clowns? But, you know, I was, I was really uh, excited to see when we got up that it was just all ages, you know, men and women both, kids, the whole nine yards, and it was just kind of a really relaxed, and that's, that really eased my tension going into, into this because uh, – I, I'm I'm still green at this. I mean, that's the only time I've ever shot spots. Yeah. So. Yeah. So, and the nice thing with with shooting something like this, shooting spots, either NFA or USA archery type stuff, is it's not just one shot in an unknown distance with a bullseye you can't really see. It's it teaches you how to be able to be repeatable. So, okay. if you're shooting a 50 yard target and you've got four shots at it. Okay. You shot the first one and put it right in the middle. Okay. What did I do to make that happen? And can I do it again? Right. Okay. If you didn't make a very good shot and it went right. Okay. What did I do to make that shot go right? I thought my pin was in the middle, but it went right. So it teaches you a little bit more about how to make good shots where on a a 3d course, if you make a, a shot and it doesn't hit where you thought it was supposed to go, you don't have a you don't have the ability to back that up and try to figure out the right. next shot what happened because you only get one shot of each target. Right. That's where I think the target side where you're shooting spots teaches you how to be a better shooter and be more repeatable and teach you what it may, teach it teaches you what it takes to make a perfect shot every time. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah. I, I know we've shot some foam before. Uh, R100. You know, I've shot that a couple times. Yeah, you get one shot and you move on, and it's like, oh, well, I blew that shot. Well, what did you know? We'll talk. Well, what did you do? I think I might have pulled. I don't know. And you start playing guessing games, but the last thing I want to do is start tweaking my setup, going from target to target to target, not knowing yeah. what I did. So yeah, so I mean, the like the USA Archery 50 meter game is nice because you get 72 arrows standing at the same distance, and people are like, well, it's boring. You're standing in one spot and you're shooting 72 arrows at the same mm-hmm. distance, at the same target. It's like. It only gets boring when you hit every single one of them right in the middle. Right, right. If you if you don't hit every single one in the middle, okay, what did I? What can I do better this next time to put more of them in the middle? Right. What what and what and how I'm shooting could be better for this next time. Okay. And for me, whenever I do that, it's every arrow. It's 
okay, that was a good shot. What can I do to be a little bit better this next time? Or, okay, that shot, I was a little weak in the back end. This next shot, I got to be a little bit stronger in the back end of my shot to make it go better this next time. So it's, it's just a constant evolution of making yourself better and making your mistakes smaller and smaller and smaller. So if you can teach yourself how to do that, a deer walks out at 20 yards, mm-hmm. you know how to make a good shot. Because you've done it repetitively. You've done it repetitively. You know what it takes to make a good shot, and you know what it feels like to shoot under a little bit of pressure and have your heart rate elevated. Right. So when that comes out, it's not going to be a shocking surprise to your system Mm -hmm. when that first deer walks out of the year. So target panic or or, or buck fever, I guess. (laughs) Looking at at either way there. So, Well, I'll tell you what. uh, We're bumping up here on our our time limit, so uh, let's take a quick break. We'll come back. We'll continue the conversation. PSC Archery has always dominated the speed category. Now, the most revolutionary cam system ever to hit the market has perfected the shooting experience. Introducing PSE's Evolve Cam System, featuring extremely high let-off capabilities and the smoothest draw cycle in history. No other cam system has ever delivered this level of total comfort and total control. Experience PSE. Experience performance. Killer Food Plots have been helping property owners for over 20 years create premier whitetail habitat. Whether replenishing your soil with their all-natural organics fusion pellets or planting a premier KFP food plot seed blend to help your deer rebuild their bodies through spring and summer while supplying the much-needed high energy during and after the rut, you can trust that Killer Food Plots family and their products will help your deer achieve their full potential. Welcome back. Sitting here in the back room at Cabela's, and here comes Chris with a handful of hardware. <laughs> oh boy! Say hi, Chris. What's up, everybody? How's it going? <laughs> we're uh, we're just talking about uh, you guys trying to change Danny and I over to spot shooters and uh, and learn this game, you know, and and just the the fun side. yeah, yeah, you know, and, and you know, talking with Dan here, and he talks about taking it into the field and using it for. Um, being able to execute that shot on a big game animal. So, yeah, you want to join the conversation real quick? Sure. I got a couple minutes. Okay. Talk, that's kind of where we're at with it. I, we, we talked a little bit about making that, that shot on a, on a big buck. You know, when, you know he's, he's shot for big money. Mm-hmm. You know, and you go through that process. So he always talks about the process and getting up there on the line. But when we're, we're out there in a tree stand, same thing. You know, yeah. you, you got to go through shot execution. You know, putting that pin on that deer and keeping the nerve steady and being able to execute the shot, you know big difference I've noticed between target shooters and bow hunters is the acceptable miss. Like for okay. me, yep. for, for someone like Dan and I, when we're shooting tournaments, an acceptable miss for us is it's still hitting a dime at 20 yards or it's right. still hitting a CD size shape at 70 or 90 meters. I mean, okay. that that's an acceptable miss for us. Um, you hear a lot of the pie, pie plate philosophy with bow hunters. Yeah, and, my dad and, taught me that when yeah. I was a kid, you know. That's I how I learned. It, I hear it daily yeah, from it, our customers. Like, if, can I hit a pie plate? Sure, yeah. yeah. Yeah, you can hit a pie plate with this. You should probably hit a quarter. Exactly. Like, that's. I mean, so, I mean, a lot of that boils down to it. I mean, when you're nervous, your, your grouping always gets bigger. Mm-hmm. So, at 20 yards, I should hope to be shooting as good as I possibly can. When I go to a tournament, I know that it's going to be a little looser. Right. The nerves are different, though. I mean, there's nothing. I, I hear a lot of guys talk about buck fever. They get excited when they see a big deer come in. They're mm-hmm. sitting there shaking. That's pretty much my first four ends of it, a tournament. You're sitting there with those same exact emotions. Right. Um, it's a survival game. So the more opportunities you can find to put yourself in those situations, the better off you are. And tournament's really the best way to do that. Okay. Um, and it's a great way to kind of have some more fun in the sport. I mean, right. You biff a shot at a target, you don't lose an animal. You don't mortally wound something. Yeah, or um, wound when you watch it walk off, you know, and, right. and not know if, if it's mortally wounded or not. But sometimes you watch some of us shoot when we uh, do do one of those shots yeah. where it's not less than perfect. It probably looks like we mortally yeah. wounded an animal, judging by our reactions. <laughs> but <laughs> And that's, I guess, that, that competition stand next to you, giving you grief, too. I mean, you know, it's, oh, it's, 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 yeah, it's, yeah, it's your buddy system, you know. It's like, oh, man, come on, really? Well, it took yeah. me a couple of years to kind of figure it out. And, and when you – Vegas, it's it's a little different because it's the weirdest game you'll ever play. Same thing with indoor nationals and indoor archery to begin mm-hmm. with. It's, it's it's the weirdest sport you ever play. It's the only opportunity you can play a team sport, in my opinion. So 
when I first started shooting tournaments, I'd look at the guys around me and I'd be like, I'm shooting against every single one of you. Right. And in your local tournaments, yeah, that's kind of what it is. You shoot one score and then that's it. Go to a thing like Vegas, everybody's going for the same thing. If I shoot a 300 and Dan shoots a 300 on day one, I'm just as excited for him as I am for me. Right. Because that means we're one step closer to the big show. Right. And it, it's a qualification. I mean, I want as many guys to shoot 300s as possible because then everybody's in a good mood. Everybody's pushing. Everybody's positive. Right. When you go to day three and you shot that 900, mm-hmm. which I haven't done yet, but you get to that point where you shoot that 900 and you're in that show, now the actual tournament starts. Like, you made the tournament. Now you want to outlast everybody else. But you see those guys in those tournament situations. I mean, they're still all excited for each other when sure. somebody else beats them or somebody else wins. I mean, it's tough. But it's a, it, it, the more the more friendships and, and camaraderie you can find in a sport is just going to make you better. And it's hard to find that in a tree stand. I mean, there's a lot of satisfaction behind bow hunting and getting sure. out there and participating in that side of the sport. But um, there is a, it's hard to find companionship out there and, and friendships and, and build that part of the sport for yourself. So it gives you uh, another outlet to be able to use the equipment that you have in a different way. Absolutely. You know, I mean, the more, the more time you can spend behind your bow, the better off you are. I mean, th- you're never going to get worse at archery. You might create problems or figure stuff <laughs> out along the road. I mean, yeah. target panic's a real thing. Yeah. Um, but you're, not, you're never going to learn how to fix that if you don't experience it. Right. So. Okay. Well, right before we went to break, we was talk- like I said, we were talking about, you know, equating this to the field. Dan... Um, in the break, we, you and I sit and talked a little bit, and, and you uh, you said you've had some experiences. I mean, obviously, shooting for a hundred thousand dollars at Vegas. I mean, that that's enough to shake anybody in their boots. At least I would think so. I don't know. Maybe you guys got ice water running through your veins, but you know, taking that to to a level of shooting a buck. You you said that you know you've had an experience where you were able to channel that and uh, talk a little bit about that. Yeah. So the 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 buck I shot two years ago came out of nowhere. I really didn't wasn't expecting a whole lot that day it wasn't something i had on camera i didn't know he was there it just okay. all of a sudden popped up and those nerves start building up it's like oh my gosh here there comes is a, here comes a big buck it's right. like i've never seen that deer before if he gets out here i'm going to shoot him and then the trail he was on i know all right he's going to be within 25 30 yards here walking right past me so you start getting those nerves built up and it's the same feeling you get in the line at the start of a tournament like chris was just talking about the first four ends mm-hmm. the first four ends of a tournament you are so nervous, and every shot is a struggle to maintain doing what you know how to do. So when that deer's walking out, click the range finder on them, 27 mm-hmm. yards, figure out which pin I'm going to use, and I pull back, and the pin gets on it, and I immediately want to punch the trigger. And it's like, nope, get in it, put your finger on the trigger, settle the pin behind the pocket, and just start pulling. It'll go off, mm-hmm. and it went off, perfect kill shot. And it's one of those times, it's it's the exact same nerves you get when you're in a tournament. When the pin's in the middle, you want to make it go now, but mm-hmm. you know you have your process built to where you let the pin settle in the middle, start applying pressure to the release, start pulling with your back, the release will go off and it'll go where it's supposed to go. So that's that's one time in my life that I can say, okay, this that particular moment, all the tournaments I'd shot leading up to that helped me get to where I could get through that little bit of buck fever, target panic, right. whatever you want to call it, right. to get through a shot and make a good shot, knowing that if I do what I'm supposed to do, that animal's going to have a quick, clean kill. Instead of rushing it and, like you said, you know, possibly wounding it or possibly not being able to find it, making a bad shot. So, yeah, I, I can understand that, and, and that makes complete sense to me. Um, you know, and I guess that's what we're trying to do today, sitting here talking about this, is getting people that, that play in the woods with their archery equipment, get them to play a game the rest of the year. Yeah, and I mean, let's Get face it, point. shooting archery is fun. Oh, I love it. It's, it's frustrating sometimes. <laughs> oh, yeah, it, it is. But, I mean, you go out and you shoot enough in your backyard or wherever mm-hmm. you typically shoot, it's it's not the same as going out and competing or, or even if you're just going out to have fun. Right. It's a different experience shooting archery in that method with people in an organized format, knowing that how I shoot, I'm going to score a certain way. Mm-hmm. And you can, I mean, I've seen guys that have gone and, um, like we used to have a field league back in St. Louis, and it was every Tuesday we'd go in and shoot. And I'm still friends with the guy to, to this day. And when we first started, uh, perfect score was a 280. So when we first started, I think he shot like a 236. Okay. So he, he'll he still text me in the summers when he's shooting. It's like, hey, I shot a 268 today. Uh-huh. So now he's 
he's to the point now where he's really, really progressing and getting better and better and better. And he's turned into a stone cold killer in the tree stand too. He's like, he goes 30 yards is nothing now. Right. He goes, that used to be a stretch for me to shoot. I wouldn't even feel comfortable doing it. But now he's like, he goes, I'm so confident behind doing what I'm doing Mm -hmm. that I have confidence in knowing that whenever I make this shot, even if I'm nervous, I know how to do what I'm going to do. And it's going to, that animal's going to die. Right. Well, you know, in talking about distance, that's something we haven't covered yet. Um, with, with archery, uh, playing the game, you know, like what you took us to, there was different unknown distances that we had to try to figure out in our own head. You know, I mean, you didn't, you walked up and you figured out what you needed to shoot, but you didn't tell Danny and, and you didn't tell me. And I didn't say anything to Danny. We each had to figure that out and taking that, that makes you, I think a more effective shooter and it extends your effective range for being able to hunt animals. Yeah. I mean, and a lot of the stuff we shoot, I like on the NFA field course, we're going to shoot out to 80 yards. If we shoot um, USA archery, like a full feed, or we're going to shoot 90 meters. That's not anywhere near what I would probably shoot mm-hmm. a deer at. Right. Um, but when you get yourself in those situations where you're taking those longer shots, a small mistake at 80 yards will equate to a way bigger miss than a small mistake at 30 yards. Right. So practicing out that longer distances and shooting out longer distances, pushing your comfort zone out a little bit more mm-hmm. every year, every single time you get out and shoot, that's going to make those shots in the woods seem mm-hmm. like a piece of cake. Right. Like I said, like I said earlier, it's you're trying to make your you're trying to make your mistakes smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller. That's that's the goal. If I shoot a perfect shot, I know it's going to go in the middle, but I want to make a shot where I don't maybe do exactly everything mm-hmm. perfect. Right. Miss as small as I can, and that's that's the goal for practice for me. Is I don't practice to get it right. I practice till I can't get it wrong. Yeah. Okay. That makes sense. Makes sense. That's a different way of thinking, though. Yeah. I mean, it's yeah. it's. <sighs> The, sm- the smaller you can make mistakes that you make affect your shot, yeah. the better off you're going to be. You know, I, I know back when I first started shooting, I mean, when I was younger, yeah, and even up until, oh, I don't know, 10 years ago, back when we first started doing the podcast, you know, I, I'd, I'd put myself in positions, you know, in a tree stand in my yard and try to mimic, you know, a tree limb, you know, hanging over and having a narrow window to shoot through. And it's like, wow, man, if I can hit that, you know, if I can hit that circle down there four out of five times, you know, I felt pretty good that day. But, you know, but like you're saying, it's like, you know, no, you need to be able to hit it until you don't make mistakes. Yeah. You know, well, make- it's it's getting to where if you make a small mistake, the the downrange impact is not going to change not, as much. Yeah, right. So it's not going to affect that kill shot. Yeah. So. Well, I'll tell you what, we're, uh, we're bumping up on another break here. Let's step outside and uh, we'll be right back after this. Acceleration is part of PSE's DNA. PSE pioneered the speed movement. Now they've developed the Vapor category to help you find the most powerful bows on the market to fit you. High speed equates to intense power and building the momentum you need to be successful. Are you a Vapor shooter? Find out at PSEArchery.com. Killer Food Plots have been helping property owners for over 20 years create premier whitetail habitat. Whether replenishing your soil with their all-natural organic fusion pellets or planting a premier KFP food plot seed blend to help your deer rebuild their bodies through spring and summer while supplying the much-needed high energy during and after the rut, you can trust that Killer Food Plots family and their products will help your deer achieve their full potential. Okay, we're sitting back here again in the back of Cabela's, hanging out, talking archery. And we've talked a lot about, you know, how this is going to help you, you know, why you should do it, basic equipment. But, Dan, we've, let's say we've got some people out there, and, and I know a few of them who have, you know, got into the archery game. And when I say the game, I'm talking about into hunting and went out and bought new gear. And, you know, they're out in their tree stand, but now they're like, okay, this makes sense to me. You know, and I, I'd like to do this. And somebody like me at my age, it's hard for me to ask those questions sometimes and ask for help. But that's something we really need to do is ask somebody who knows this game. But where do they start? You know, I mean, where where would you point somebody? I mean, the two biggest places I'm going to tell you to go to for help or, or direction on how to get into this stuff is the websites I told you about before, mm-hmm. the NFA or USA Archery or ASA, IBO. All those organizations have websites that are – We'll try to steer you in the right direction to get you to where 
there's something going on around where you live. The other one I tell you to go to is find a good pro shop. Okay. And go in and ask the guy. Say, hey, listen, I bought this stuff. I want to start doing a little bit more. Okay. And they can either point you towards a league maybe they're doing or maybe there's a, a club that, that does some shoots. And they can say, here, listen, go talk to this guy. He runs this league or he runs this this range or whatever, go talk to him okay. and he'll get you set up and tell you about the leagues and show you how the game works. And that, that's the biggest thing. I'm, I'm just like I did with you guys last year. I right. want to introduce more and more people into shooting this kind of stuff because it makes you a better shooter. And eventually that's going to turn into making you a better hunter. Right. Is when you, when you're looking for information and you're pointing somebody in a direction, like what we're trying to do here tonight, is there anything that you would say, you, you might need to watch out for that. You know, that might be headed in the wrong direction. I mean, there, there's always bad information from people. But, I mean, generally speaking, everybody that I've bumped into in the archery industry, pretty good guys. Yeah, I, I mean, right off the top of my head, I can't think of anything. I'd say, eh, I wouldn't go down that direction. It's just yeah. just do some research and find out something that, that appeals to you and you're going to get excited about. Okay. That's, that's probably the best thing, best advice I could give anyone who's looking into it is, Every organization is going to have the rule book. Kind of read through it. And don't get too concerned with, like, the real fine print detail stuff. Just kind of look look at the games and say, okay, field archery. It's kind of like 3D. You're walking mm-hmm. through the woods. You're shooting targets at different distance. In my opinion, field archery is the most fun archery game there is out there. Right. Um, feet of types, target shooting is fun, but it's just not the same. You're out in the woods. You're walking around. You're shooting different distances. It's it's kind of like 3D, but with spots and a lot more arrows. Okay. So typically on a, like an NFA round, you're going to shoot 112 arrows in a day. That's a lot on, of shooting. On a feeder round, you're going to shoot, uh, I think it's 80, 80 on a feet of field round. So, I mean, you've got all different types of, of shooting you can go do. And it's, it's fun just because there's way more shooting. You can spend mm-hmm. four hours on a field course and shoot 112 arrows, where on an ASA course you'll spend four hours out there and shoot 20 arrows. Right. There's way more opportunity to learn on, on a field course or a target course, I think, than on a, on a 3D range. Okay. Not, not bad mouth in 3D at all because it's, no, it's right still yeah. a fun game. I yep. enjoy shooting it. I just don't enjoy shooting that or feel like you get as much out of it. Um, as you do on on a target range. Well, I tell you what, we're uh, we're running out of time. We, we're getting kicked out. Uh-oh. <laughs> I heard the the little bell go off in the background here a few minutes ago. So uh, you know, um, real quickly, we got Chris here. He, he chimed in a few minutes ago. Uh, here in Michigan, Chris, you, you got your feet pretty well planted here in Michigan. Yeah. Somebody like myself who maybe doesn't know what direction to go and is like, man, I'd like to try this. Where, the, where would you recommend that they, they look here locally? If you're just getting started, honestly, the best place to go is go for the IAA stuff. Okay. Um, right now, they're real 3D heavy, I'll be honest. Okay. Um, but for a bow hunter transferring over, that's probably going to be somewhere where they're going to feel most comfortable. Okay. Um, but IAA is being very open to growing the sport. So we're going to see a lot of field stuff coming from them. So like what Dan was just talking about. Okay. We're going to see some field shoots coming from them. Uh, we might see some 50 meter stuff from them. Uh, they're one of the up, one of the main organizations in Michigan that's looking to grow archery. They don't mm-hmm. care how they grow it. Grow archery is kind of their whole thing. So okay. um, that's the best way. And they're real Facebook heavy. Advertisements on there are great. Their social media presence is fantastic. Okay. So it's super easy to find. Uh, other target organizations you have in the state, you've got the state IVO. You've got right. uh, Michigan Archers Association, which is going to be your standard target. Um, SAM, which is your USA Archery, um, they put on three tournaments a year, um, strictly USA Archery rules. Uh, if you ever want to shoot one of those, make sure you do your research on the rules because there's even a dress code, okay. equipment rules, like no sight lights, certain diameter arrows, different things like that. Um, so you want to be real familiar if you're going to shoot anything SAM or USA Archery, okay. um, exactly what you're doing. Yeah, all organizations in Michigan will allow guests. Um, you might not be subject for awards or be uh, eligible for awards, but you can shoot. Kind of like what Danny and I did last year. Technically, your guys' equipment didn't perfectly fall into line to USA right. Archery guidelines. But like I said, we're all wanting to get more people into the sport right. and experience experience going out and competing a little bit. So all these organizations, I haven't found a one yet that wouldn't say, yeah, your equipment doesn't quite fall in lines with our rules. We'll let you shoot as a guest for fun. Right. Yeah. At least get your feet wet in it. And that's yeah. that's one of the big things I want to try to get across to everyone is don't be afraid to go out and try. Yeah, that that was my biggest thing is like I was like I told him, I was scared to death, you know, not knowing what to expect, number one. But but like you said, being a guest and being able to go out and do that, that was awesome because it did. It got my feet wet and gave me a little bit of experience getting out there. And now I was like, yeah, let's go do this. 
Yeah, so, I mean, there's a lot of stuff coming up um, with all the Michigan stuff, and I know there's some more things going on in Toledo this mm-hmm. year. Um, that same shoot, it's going to be a different location this year, but it's still going to be down in Toledo. Say so anytime you guys want to go shoot, just let me know, and I'm be more okay. than happy to kind of guide you guys in the right direction. <laughs> right. And and I'm sure any of your listeners or people listening to this, if they've got any questions, you guys could be more than yeah, happy to forward absolutely. those on to me and yep. me or Chris. Or if it's if it's about the state of Michigan, probably forward it on to Chris. But if there's right. any other questions, I'm more than happy. I said my main thing is I want to I want to get more people to get out there and experience this mm-hmm. because this does directly even though it's you're shooting a target it does directly translate to making you a better hunter well that's what i need you know i mean that's what we all need you know i mean you, you want to be the best hunter you be in the field so all right well they're kicking us out so we're going to have to wrap it up and take off and uh you know chris is uh pushing me out the door here so <laughs> that'll do it for us folks well hopefully those three segments there will have had you ready to go out and consider doing a little bit of archery uh target shooting to up your hunting game that's what uh, that's what we're hoping anyway. That's what we're going to try to do here. Danny is getting his bow set up. I've got mine set up and starting to tune. So, you know, hopefully uh, you can use some of the, the recommendations and instructions that we've had here today that will help you improve your time out in the field. So uh, that'll do it here for us this week here on the Up North Journal. You know, it's Memorial Day. Danny's taking the, the, the week off. He is spending time with his family. I've got my family here. So we're going to wrap up the show and we're going to call it a another episode of the up north journal and if uh, you guys are so inclined stay tuned this week because we are also going to be making an announcement here on our facebook page and probably twitter as well so stay tuned to that look forward to that and i also want to give a quick shout out to hunter's blend coffee uh actually we we weren't drinking coffee on the show or on the live stream today because it was 90 degrees it was 90 degrees out here so uh we let the coffee pot take a rest as well here on memorial day so but otherwise that'll do it for us here this week and as we always say if you're in the woods or out on the water shoot straight and be safe until next week on the up north journal and don't forget you can catch us in syndication at 2 p.m eastern time on goodtalkradio.com this episode was brought to you by pse archery Carbon express fourth arrow camera arms wind scent hunting sense Killer food plots, seeds, supplements, and attractants. Cabela's. Spot shooters. Limb walker game calls. Twisted Minds bowstrings. Hunter's blend coffee. Antler action. And family traditions tree stands. Thanks for listening and join us again here next week. Until then, remember, as we always like to say, if you're out on the water or in the woods, shoot straight and be safe until next week on the Up North Journal.